Okay. Thank you all for coming. Welcome to my little talk about the Joomla framework, which is brand new. We've been in announced, I think, now for about six weeks. So this is all still very fresh, very new. And um, I hope you don't know already what I'm telling you. Um, first of all, who am I? Um, my name is Ruven. I've been in the Joomla bug squad since 2009, right before 1.6 was released. I've also been in the security team for uh, a bit over two years now. And for one and a half year, I've been a platform maintainer, and now I can call myself a framework maintainer, which is basically the same thing. I have the tendency to talk really, really fast. So if I get too fast, just wave or scream or... Uh, no, I can close the door. I can close the door, too. <laughs> or, you? Okay. <laughs> um, so if I get too fast, uh, wave, scream, do something, and I try to slow down. Okay. First, let's talk about the Joomla platform, which is really our past and our presence right now still. Um, first, what went good? Um, my remote broke, so I have to stand here by the notebook, so uh, nobody wonders. Um, we have a really strong, or had always, a really strong focus on testing and continuous integration. In fact, we were the first project I know of that employed continuous integration for pull requests already. So not after they were merged, but already when they were submitted, we were testing them, so we didn't break anything by... Uh, merging them. We did this way before Travis CI ever caught any sort of momentum in the, um, in the PAP community. In fact, we did it right before Travis CI was founded. So basically, the stole our idea, I would uh, say, but it's probably not true. Um, we had an independent release cycle from the CMS, which really helped us to innovate more quickly and do things in a larger time frame so the CMS could build on them and still have a tested code base that is released and in a stable way. That didn't work perfectly because we figured out um, we actually broke a lot of CMS code in the process because we didn't really test the CMS stuff. We tested the general use case. So it's on the good slide, but it wasn't all really good. Also, we really had more decoupled code. The CMS code, as it was before the platform was split off, was really focused on this one project, on this one application. So it was really hard to do anything with it but write a content management system and actually this one content management system, Joomla. Any other content management system, any other application would have been really, really hard. The platform as it is now allows you to do it. It's still very hard. You're still very focused on the architecture. So you have to do a real Joomla-like architecture. Otherwise, it won't work. But you can do it, which is actually a lot of progress. And there have been applications, actually kind of cool ones, um, nice ones that are built on the platform. Not many, so. <laughs> um, higher code quality. With the decoupling, with the continuous integration, the code quality has been in my opinion, really improved a lot to the point where um, extension developers who used to pull in like Zen framework or other outside solutions decided to drop these again and say the platform now achieves what I needed to do. And so I can drop these requirements beyond this and ju just use the platform. Also, we won innovation of the year at last day and beyond, which was kind of cool and I think showed that this really had, okay, this should be 2012, that's a typo. Um, this is was a good force um, for this. Um, if you see something's cut off, um, the slides are made for a widescreen uh, presentation, and I didn't know the beamer was a small screen, so um, please excuse that. What didn't went good? We had confusing version numbers. We had 13.1 um, just released. Before that, we had 12.2, and there wasn't really a major difference between them. It was mostly bug fixes, some new features, but there was nothing breaking, so why did we increase the major version? Didn't make any sense. Didn't think about that. I said it is possible to use these, uh, to write an independent application, but what if we have a really excellent GitHub package. We had this for a long time, and we were one of the first projects who had a really good PHP GitHub API beyond the one provided by GitHub. Unfortunately, if you wanted to use it, you had to put in the entire platform with all our application code, our input annotation code, our database stuff. You need the whole shebang, even if you just wanted to use the GitHub in your Zend or Symfony application. And this is really an all or nothing approach. Also, we needed to maintain a really high level of backwards compatibility, which really was a problem in decoupling the code even more. We achieved a fair level, but only in so far as we could without breaking the CMS. And the ugly, we had a huge baggage of CMS-specific code. There's this infamous legacy folder uh, Andrea just mentioned in her talk, and we had this in the platform because these are all classes the CMS needed that were tightly coupled with the platform, so we couldn't just drop them and say the CMS maintains them. And we, couldn't, we had to maintain them, we couldn't test them, we only tested them when we merged back to the CMS. So the code went stale, 
was went untested and actually decreased the code quality. Also, it leads to interesting hacks like these, um, where we check if a certain class exists, which only exists in the CMS, and raise a different error. Um, it just code smell. This is in the platform. Oops. Yeah. This code right now is in the platform and the CMS as it's released right now. I mean, I don't know if the uh, CMS has cleaned it up um, because they were doing some merging back after the split, but before the day we split, this was still in the CMS and this platform. And it's really ugly. <laughs> so what did we decide to do? We kill it. Actually, we name it. It's still the same project. It's the same people doing it. It's very similar goals, but it's a new approach. So why did we rename it? What's the difference in the approach, really? The change in philosophy. The platform was really the fundamental building block of the CMS. It's like the basement for a house. Everything in the CMS is built on top of it. And if you want to build something else on it, you have to follow the same style, the same architecture. With the framework, we want to be more like legal bricks. You can take the bricks, only the red ones you like, and build a red house of it. Even, or if you like the green symphony stuff, you can do the green niche bricks from us and use those. If you still want to build a Joomla-like application, you take the whole framework, it's no problem. But if you just want certain stuff, I mean, I just want the GitHub RPA or the new LinkedIn RPA, or I don't know what other great stuff we have. You just take these and leave everything else behind. This makes your code smaller, more maintainable, and easier to integrate with other projects. So what's the framework all about besides this? Um, this is from the announcements the tech talk generated. You see, of course, CMS framework Joomla is always um, the big stuff, the CMS um, hovers over everything. It's about developers em embracing the things they learned, writing extensions for Joomla, and transferring it to other applications, other users beyond the CMS. It's about dependency management. It's about using Composer for this. It's about easier upgrades. And it's about innovating in things the PHP has offered for us that we couldn't do in the current platform. The CMS hasn't been able to do either because of the strong backwards compatibility. For example, one of the starting points why we had the big break <coughs> were namespaces. <coughs> namespaces are new since PHP 5.3. So when Joomla was built back in 2006, they just didn't exist. This was still three years off. They can be used to write much more readable code. They can also be used to write much more unreadable code, but you shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, they can help you organize your code way better, but it's almost impossible to do it in a backwards compatible fashion to make existing code namespace aware, or use namespaces. We actually figured out a way. Don Gilbert did it, and he did it in the very beginning of the framework split. It's really actual code. It's uh, actually a really elegant solution, but with actually implications. It's uh, slowing down the runtime and so on. We can use this as a transition way when the CMS starts using certain things, but doing it for the entire platform was just overkill. So first, for those who don't know namespaces, um, this is how you do it right now. Uh, JApplication Web Client is a fairly new class um, from the platform. It's been probably about a year. It's like JBrowser of the future. And now it's called this. This is the fully qualified name, so-called. You can just substitute every occurrence of JApplication Web Client with this. Then you're using namespaces, just not using them right, so it's less readable. You can also do this. So you, co you have one line at top use this class, and then you can just use the shorthand for the rest of the file. This makes it more readable. Also, if you use it very often, you can alias the name. So you can make it turn it, if you have a class name you think doesn't express what it actually does, you can alias it so you can write more expressive code. Of course, I can also alias it to foobar, and nobody will understand my code anymore. So don't do that. Um, with going with the new framework and integrating more with other projects, we also decided to adopt PSRs. PSR are PHP standard recommendations. They are um, developed by a group called FIC, Framework Interoperability Group. Um, Joomla has been a member for um, one and a half years there, um, originally rep represented by Andrew Eddy, who just stepped back, and now by Don Gilbert. And this is a group of developers for major frameworks, Drupal, Zen, Symfony, and so on. Every big framework is basically in there. And they decide what pieces of our frameworks can we write in a way that we can switch them out for each other and use solutions together. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So it's not invented here, it's gone, hopefully. So what the PSRs have we decided to do in the framework? Can you put the, I can hear myself talking, it's kind of. 
Um, first of all, of course, PSR zero, the most infamous properly, auto loading, which I come back to. That. Um, it's basically you can have one auto loader and use code from different projects, so you don't have to keep 20 of them around. Um, Joomla currently has its custom auto loader, which I think really helped developers write better code and didn't have to worry about what classes do I have to load now. And with PSR zero, you can have the same comfort for outside libraries that aren't from Joomla. Uh, there's actually a pull request for the CMS to add a PSL0 autoloader, um, hopefully making it into 3.2. PSR1 is about interoperable code, which is just saying basically if I import a class from another project, I don't want to have any side effects on my code. So just declare the class, it gives you constants maybe, and nothing else. It shouldn't change the global state in any other way. Um, Joomla does this. It has done it ever since 1.5. I think there may be three files who don't do it. And um, two of them are still in the framework because they have good reasons to do so, but basically we are already in compliance and have been for years, even before the standard existed. PSA3 is the newest one, and probably the most exciting one, for, to me at least. It's about common logging. It defines in PHP interface how a logger should behave and look like, and you can switch out the logger from another project and use it still in your code. Um, I have a patch ready. I'm just waiting for the PSA0 um, patch to be merged, um, so you can use Joomla's logger in a PSR zero project. So there's a small wrapper around it, and if I import a library like Gazelle or Bass uh, that uses a PSR three logger, I can slip in the Joomla logger and all the logs generated by this library go just to your normal Joomla log file. Um, so it integrates seamlessly. In the framework, we actually went so far as that we are considering dropping JLog completely and saying just use one of the other libraries, because there are libraries like Monolog who do so much more than our logging. And we don't really need our own solutions. We're still a bit up in the air about it. We don't know if we're going to do it. Um, but we're seriously considering this. And if you're writing a framework application, it's your choice. You can use JLog. You can use Monolog. You can use Zend logging probably. It's your choice. Or you can write a small uh, wrapper around syslog and just use PHP syslog functionality. There's also PSRX because it isn't finished yet. It's still in a draft stage. It's about cache. Cache is also something that um, many libraries need to perform adequately. So it was a strong focus to standardize it. Unfortunately, caching is also inherently complex. So um, it's still in, in discussion stage. It isn't um, finished yet because it's probably the most ambitious PSR so far. Um, but the, we have dropped our old cache package, as we've now on it since Joomla 1.5, and written a completely new one around this cache interface. So we're probably going to have the first library um, in the PHP world, completely based on this interface, and we really hope that it's picked up outside of Joomla. We're also pre already prepared for future PSRs, like U URIs are um, supposed to be uh, standardized with the interface. We already defined our own interface, um, so it should be fairly easy to switch out. Um, if you can count, you notice a number missing. Which one is it? Who paid attention? Two. Right. What about two? Um, PSR2 defines a coding style, like peer coding style or K&R coding style, and we decide we don't like it. <laughs> um, we have a well-defined coding standard. We had this one before um, PSR2 was uh, drafted or even finished. And um, we decided it's not worth the hassle to um, restyle the entire code base again, just uh, one and a half years after we already done it, um, causing a lot of issues for developers who have to rethink. We have to basically lose file history in the process. And for this improvement, it's just not worth it in our opinion. Um, we don't see a common code style as contributing to um, code exchange between projects. Um, so we try to don't do it. Um, we have done some small corrections to our own coding style um, to be more in line with PSR2, um, but very minor ones. Um, just very shortly to PSR0, because it's probably the one most people um, are going to touch first when they use the framework. It turns class names into paths. So if you have this class name, it's just going to become this path. Um, it's very easy. Every namespace separator is switched out for a directory separator. And behind the final name, you add .php, and you get your paths. There are some other rules, like underscores also get turned into the directory separators, but we don't use those in the Joomla framework, and you don't ever have to use them. And you probably shouldn't, because you should use namespaces if you write modern code. We also turned the framework from this one big package into many, many, many packages, like I mentioned before. What are these packages? These are the packages. You probably know most of them. I think the really new ones are uh, linked in, uh, which isn't actually on this list yet because this wasn't uh, done when I um, made this uh, presentation. 
and um, keychain, which is also pretty new. Um, but basically, it's the same building blocks that make up the platform now. Just now, you can take each one of these individually and use them. Then not quite, because I have, of course, dependencies. If I use um, form, I'm going to need filter because it validates the input. And if I use GitHub, it, I need HTTP because I need to make HTTP requests to the GitHub API. But I don't have to use archive just because I use GitHub. But if I need those dependencies, like HTTP for GitHub, and HTTP needs URI again, because of course I need to make a request to an URI, I don't want to go through uh, downloading 20 different packages uh, to uh, meet my dependencies. So they decide we're going to use Composer. Composer is a de facto PHP dependency management solution today. Um, do you all know Peer, the Peer system? Peer is basically the same thing, just worse. Peer has a global um, scope. So if I install a package, it's available globally, at least for this PHP installation. I can have multiple PHP installations on one server, but each PHP installation has all the same packages. So now I have running Joomla 2.5 and Joomla 3 on my server. Both need a common library. If I install it to peer and Joomla 3 needs a newer version, I got a problem because if there's a backwards compatibility break in this library in between those versions, I'm in a tough position. I can't just fix this. And Composer solves this by having per project dependency management. Every project I have installed on my server downloads its own copy. So you use a bit more disk space, but you gain the ability to run different versions of libraries on the same instance. There's a public repository on packages, .org. That's another typo. And yes, um, I haven't found the number, unfortunately. They don't publish it, but there are several thousand packages available you can use right now. If you add one more line to your Composer JSON file, I'll show you that in a bit, and you can turn in a whole new library into your project. Um, there's SQL formatting. There are, I don't know, half a dozen database abstraction layers. Um, there's almost nothing you can find on there. Even big companies like Amazon and Google started using it to provide the APIs. If you have packages you don't want to make public, like my employer has internal packages we can't make public because they uh, contain um, sensitive information and um, well, our value, um, you can host your own uh, mini packages. It's a software called Zartis. Um, Zen Framework actually does the same for them. They have their own um, instance of packages. I don't actually know why, um, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. You can create internal packages um, for your internal projects, or you can run your own for your public stuff. I wouldn't recommend the latter. The former is really great. It has been, Composer is um, adopted by all the big frameworks right now. Um, Symfony 2, Laravel 4, um, Zen Framework 2, um, as mentioned with their own uh, private uh, copy. And at least Symfony and Laravel are really built around it. Drupal 2 to an extent, so it's really a required, almost required um, to use Composer to use them. And you get free dependency management and you get free auto-loading because the auto-loader is generated automatically for all files downloaded through Composer. So what about the framework? We've currently published 33 packages on Packagist. So all the individual packages we have are now public on packages. They're still in an alpha state. They're not tagged. You have to use, um, you have to set the minimum stability for your project to development to get them. Um, but you can use them today. And the issue tracker developed by Michael Babka right now actually does this. He is working on the alpha state framework and using this dependencies through Composer. And whenever we update something in our framework repository, um, the developers type one Composer update on the command line and they already get the new stuff. No way hunting down, no need to merge, you just get them automatically. There's also a package for the entire framework, which is more a convenience thing. If you do want to use the entire framework to build your application, you don't have to type in 33 lines in your Composer JSON, just this one will do. How does one of these Composer JSON files look like? It's like this. This one's actually from the Joomla tracker. Um, you can see you can define your minimum PHP version you need. You can also define um, extensions from PHP you need. Um, these are just checked. You can automatically install them, obviously. Um, and you can define what other packages you need. Um, you can see the entire Joomla framework is pulled in. Dev master, because it's still not tagged, it's not a released version, so you always get the current development version. Once we tag it, he's going to replace it with 1.0, and he's always going to get 1.0. You can also put in 1. star or 1. asterisk, and you always get um, maintenance <coughs> updates 1.5, 1.7, and so on, but you will never get 2.0. Um, there's also some other uh, dependencies. You can see one from Symfony, so he's really approached, uh, already embracing the mix and match. Uh, Trick is uh, not really a Symfony, but close to Symfony. 
um, Mustache is a completely different project, and they seamlessly integrate. They're all auto-loaded. Your own files too. This is the auto-loading, um, the last section, where you can define where your own files reside. And they created a common auto-loader, and you can just, uh, um, this is what PSR0 uh, makes possible. So you get all the convenience of the auto-loader for different packages. This is something that even Peer couldn't do. I mentioned we had bad version numbers. So with the new frameworks and the new name, we decide we can just break our version numbers and do it all over again. What you're going to do if you do it right, you embrace semantic versioning. Um, it's kind of like the CMS works. You got three parts. The last part is the bug fix number, which you increment every time you make a bug fix. The second part is uh, the feature. Every time you add a new feature, you increment this one. And the first part you only uh, increment if you break backwards compatibility in any way so possible, uh, in any way. Um, this is especially important because of um, Composer. Um, because you can use these asterisks to um, just get all the maintenance versions or all the feature versions new, but never get a backwards compatibility um, incompatible release without saying, I want it. Um, with our current versions, of this was not possible. For example, 11.4 um, and 12.1 were compatible, 12.2 broke backwards compatibility. Um, that would have never flown. Let's talk community. As I mentioned, we want our code to better be embraced by the wider PHP community. This was already a goal with the platform. The platform didn't really meet that goal because, to be honest, there are other frameworks who are more suited for a rapid, rapidly writing a new application. Only someone very familiar with the Joomla CMS as an extension developer or a core developer would have embraced the Joomla platform to write a completely new application because he's very familiar with the code. To a new developer, it wasn't really approachable. Um, we didn't have very good documentation for writing completely new applications, and it, isn't re it was never really designed to write in other applications. It's possible, but it's not very comfortable. So with the new frameworks, we hope that people may not attempt to, to use the whole framework, but at least use larger and larger parts, like the GitHub API, which is still superb, or Keychain, which is a solution I haven't seen anywhere else. But we also want to take their code, because why in reinvent the wheel if somebody else has already done the work? So what have we done? We have already embraced it. We now support YAML, which is uh, yet another markup language, which is a really cool language to write configuration files, uh, which can be easily validated and do way more than any files. Um, JL Registry, or just Registry as it's now called, now supports JML um, by using the Symphony's Tooth Parser. Um, we're currently talking about dropping our own session system because it's um, a big old turd. It uh, has some amazing features. Um, but it's very hard to test. Um, unit testing is really complicated by it. And also Symphony 2 has a very good um, unit testable um, session solution. Um, so you ca if you have uh, extension code or application code that's dependent on the session, it's much easier to mock out the Symphony 2 solution than it was our, uh, to mock out our own solution. Um, so we're still talking about whether you want to adopt it or whether you want to model our own closer to it, because I do some things differently than we do. Um, this is still up in the air. There's a pull request open for us. Uh, your input is very welcome on this, what you think. Um, but even the point that we're talking about is this a massive change to our old approach um, we had in the CMS and the platform about um, code um, we ship has to be developed by us so it conforms to our needs and our expectations. Now we're more uh, inclined to just engage with the upstream developer and say, hey, this is great code. Um, if you change these three things, hey, we're going to adopt it because it's perfect. We also adopt JMail, um, which um, is basically a small wrapper on PHP mailer, but really force the application to use PHP mailer, which is not that well maintained anymore. Um, now you get the choice of either using Swift mailer, PHP mailer, PHP's native mail functionality, or whatever you want. Um, it's very seamlessly to integrate. Also, um, as mentioned before, um, we probably going to drop JLog, um, maybe not, but um, one recommended solution is always monolog. Uh, so this is a lot of outside code, and code we just don't have to maintain anymore. How far are we? Um, we're currently in alpha state. Um, we expect to release in um, this year, uh, probably more to the end of the year. We do expect to have a better by the summer. Um, we're a bit behind schedule. There has been um, a bit of um, yeah, a change. Um, Andrew had to step back um, for personal reasons. So um, we added some new developers um, to the maintainers. Um, we also have got some more contributions um, to the pull request, um, through pull request, um, but we have slowed down. We have probably 80% done, but the remaining 20% are the hardest 80%. So it's the 80-20 rule. Um, all the package have been split into their own packages. 
And they're all unit tested if you run them globally. But if you try to run the unit test for just one package, about half the packages do fail because of some dependencies that can't be resolved or some other difficulties that they rely on other stuff they shouldn't rely on. Um, so we're still working on fully decoupling these. And that's kind of hard work. Um, if you're not experienced with unit tests, it's um, hard to get through it. And unfortunately, we have about three people who really know unit tests. I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, those are other people um, like Don, who's uh, very more experienced there. Um, a big stumbling block is a string package um, who relies on the PHP UTF-8 library for um, compa compatibility with installations who don't have multi-byte string installed. Unfortunately, PHP UTF-8 isn't maintained anymore as well for over two years now. So it's not unpackaged. Uh, so, and now we're considering whether we're switching to a different solution called Patchwork, um, which has a totally different design. Or if you're just going to take uh, PHP UTF, rip out the parts we need, and put it in our own code, or whether we're going to publish PHP UTF to packages, this is still very much in flux. And it's also something we have to decide. And this is probably the biggest uh, thing we need to resolve before we're going to have to, uh, a better release, even. Um, also, obviously, we need for the cache PSR. Um, if you're building an entire package around it, um, we can't release a stable version until it's a stable standard. Uh, anything else would probably be kind of dangerous. So how is this going to impact the CMS? The easy answer is not at all. They don't have to take the code. They're reabsorbing the platform right now. They're also reabsorbing the platform unit tests. So they got all the same test coverage. They're adopting the same continuous integration strategies the platform always had and the framework still has. So they're going to write the same high quality code and maintain the same high quality code the platform did. Um, but they can embrace it. We're already gaining real application testing and free integration testing because the Joomla tracker solution is built around the framework. It actually was started on the platform and several CMS classes. And they just switched a couple of weeks ago to the framework and are now working on working on that version so they get free testing how this framework actually behaved when developing a real application. That's going to help the CMS too. Also, the discrete packages help a whole lot. Um, Joomla may not be ready to give up its uh, I don't know, database layer, because they have several hacks in there um, that the platform never had. But they may take up URI or GitHub. So it's easy to just take the solutions the CMS deems ready for the framework and keep maintaining those that they don't think are ready. Also, we're going interfaces all the way. We have many more interfaces already in the frameworks, and we're going to have much more of them. Even URIs are now interfaced. All type-ins are made against these interfaces, making it possible for the CMS to say, OK, we want to have the HTTP package, but you really need some stuff be, uh, the platform just doesn't do, or the framework just doesn't do for us. So we just write our own URI and implement the same interface. So our type-ins will work. The framework will not bother with it. It will just accept the CMS the, uh, URI. And um, the CMS can keep maintaining their own code. Um, of course, they have to put in the whole package. And it's not something extension developers can easily do. They cannot just switch out the URL class. But an application that's built on the framework can switch out codes. They don't only need the interfaces as the contracts on how things interact, but they don't need the whole classes. They can just subclass them or write their own replacements. That's basically it. Ah, that's what I answered here. Thank you. And questions? So basically, now we get two separate projects. Yes. It's were always sort of two separate problems, just strong interdependently, uh, strong interdependence between them. Um, the platform always had their own release schedule. They had their own set of maintainers. There are some cross sections, like Michael Babka is on the project leadership team, is a strong contributor to the CMS, and also the uh, platform maintainer and the liaison to the uh, PLT. Um, so we do work with each other. And we expect and hope that the CMS over time ex adopts many of the framework packages. Um, but they work independently. The framework packages are not designed to build a CMS. They're designed to build an application. The CMS is one application. But the CMS will have needs beyond those uh, the framework will meet. And our goal is, is to write or provide all the extension points the CMS will need. Um, but there were always two projects already. Uh, what I'm interested in is that um, uh, you were talking about adapting things from like Jamal, for instance, from Symfony. Now, I can imagine that it's uh, very good to do that. 
Uh, but what's the process to monitor if this is still developed in the direction that Yula is uh, interested? Because I can imagine if somewhere halfway when we have totally depend on it or think it's very important to use, they might go a different direction and we're how are we monitoring this kind of uh, processes? Okay. Uh, the question was how are we going to uh, pay attention to what um, other projects do and is the still in the direction are still maintained? Um, it's a judgment call. Um, when taking on a new dependency, um, we always uh, have to look, uh, we, we're still having this discussion about the session system, um, whether it's something we should maintain ourselves because it's just mission critical to um, have this. Um, something like a YAML parser is very, uh, uh, so the interface is very simple. You give an input string and you get a PHP array out. Um, that's not something you can change very much about. Um, for things like logging, we have this PHP standard recommendation with another set of interfaces. We accept these interfaces and we tell developers, use whatever you like. Um, you can roll your own, like jlog, um, for the case of the framework, or you can just write, uh, use an outside impl um, implementation, so they're very decoupled. Um, if you do accept or do take in a completely outside um, library, um, we have to discuss it, uh, we discuss it with the developers too, like uh, Fabian Potencia, the Symfony lead developer, um, has been active on our own issue tracker talking with us about these classes, and um, we don't have a process to monitor it continuously. Um, but we do talk a lot about it beforehand. Um, what does exist is um, a way for uh, to check automatically whether there are security issues in any releases we use. Um, it's not yet quite done. Uh, the the um, database does exist. We you know, uh, haven't integrated in our continuous integration yet. That's going to happen over the next few weeks. So we automatically check whether any of our stable releases um, relies on code that has known security issues. That we do. Um, yeah. What I consider the most typical question, uh, package of Joomla. Typical in what way is the question? Um, I, I mean, uh, it's very good that you don't reinvent the wheel, so uh, you can use monologue, you can use all kind of things. Oh, you mean what we have the strongest, uh, our strong, oh, you most unique thing. Okay, um, the most unique probably right now is Keychain. Um, because it's something I've never seen in any other PHP solution, which is built on our registry, which is also very rare. Um, the probably the thing that will most easily see adoption outside are probably the social APIs. Um, we have this GitHub API, um, we have now um, in the process LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. They're already available to a certain extent in the CMS. I'm not really sure to what extent right now, but I've now uh, Elin has merged some of these in. Uh, all of them I see now uh, she's waving, uh, so they're all in. Um, so CMS developers already reap the benefits of this. Um, but in short, the most um, uh, typical things are not the most uh, critical things for the Joomla state CMS yes. at the moment. Yes. Um, for the, the yeah. uh, things at the... At the, the most critical things for the CMS are stuff like database abstraction, input sanitation, and stuff like that. And um, those are not things where we can claim a leadership position. Um, for a database abstraction, it's probably right now Doctrine DBAL, database abstraction layer, um, which is the uh, uncrowned king uh, of database abstraction in the PHP world because it works on PDO. We're also discussing going more PDO, but probably not going as far as Doctrine. Um, also very critical is input sanitation, um, which we do have a very good package, but it's currently falling kind of out of favor. Um, people prefer to escape now when doing their SQL queries. And it's frankly not an approach I like, and I like the way Joomla does it. But in the wider PHP community, I think there's probably a disconnect about this. And um, so I think we have a very good package about this for uh, how to handle input and how to sanitize it. Um, but my gut feeling is it's not going to be adopted much because the current thinking in the PHP community is a different one. But these are probably the more critical packages uh, for the CMS. Ronnie? something wrong in an approach where we have dedicated libraries. I mean, my problem is I want to use the framework. I want to do a lot of applications on the framework. But if I have to fire up the entire CMS to access data through a uni universal unified model, then I'm kind of losing the scalability and the concept if I have to load up the CMS for all other users. So I'd like to be able to access the data 
inner application or from the CMS, but through some sort of ground layer or ground library in the framework. So as for CMS4 and as for EM and other elements like that, other things like web service and stuff, I don't see right now a focus on the framework and the thought towards CMS4 for making sure there's some sort of coherent or combined plan or a combined concept in the future. Is that something you're Okay, uh, I have to face that question shortly for the video. Uh, it's going to be difficult now. Um, it's basically uh, uh, was the question how we're going to ensure or how we're going to help developers who want to access CMS data in their own application in the framework. Um, is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a good question. It's something we should strive to do. Um, I personally think UCM, in a generalized way, is something that would be excellent um, for this framework and would be one unique point. It's built uh, very important for the CMS and something um, for the, the wider PHP community um, that could be interesting. Um, they are currently thinking with PHP CR that go in this direction in the PHP world, but probably not in a very Joomla way. And to an alternative to this would be very interesting. Um, the UCM had an interesting history uh, with regards to platform and CMS um, that I don't really want to go into right now. Um, I think the current stance from the framework is to let the CMS decide how to implement it, to see how it goes forward, and then look at it and generalize it a bit. So the CMS can extend it so it still works for their needs, and we have a general way for the framework. Um, but right now, we're still very focused on getting the basic building blocks ready so you can actually use the framework in a productive way. Um, the, uh, um, other, my personal hope is that in Joomla 4 we we'll see the CMS adopt the first few framework packages that are easy to use. Um, probably not all of them, probably not even half of them, but I hope we're going to start. So with, PHP 4, uh, with Joomla 4, I don't think that's what you want is going to be achieved, um, but maybe by Joomla 4.5. Um, just my personal hopes. Um, there haven't been any plans about this really. Yeah, the comment that here was that backwards compatibility is going to be tough if we start rewriting things again for uh, Joomla 5 then because the f uh, framework is uh, adopting things. Um, it's true. Um, we hope to solve a lot of this by defining interfaces. Like um, my plan or my head currently is when the uh, framework starts um, being integrated in the CMS, we're going to use widely the existing CMS classes, have them implement our interfaces from the framework, which don't change any code, um, and update all the type-ins as far as possible to the um, interfaces, uh, to these interfaces, so um, extension developers have a possibility to phase over slowly to the new code. Um, also, the aliasing stuff uh, work done by John, uh, John Gilbert for the namespaces is going to help some by this. Um, so we have some ideas how about to ease the transition. Um, for something like UCM, the code is already largely in the CMS now um, for the text. It's just not fully developed uh, out to be really a UCM. It's only used for text right now. And I believe it's going to be used for content versioning uh, in the next release. And um, we're going to have to wait a bit to see how this pans out, how it's really going to be designed, and then hope to generalize the underlying stuff. Um, it's a bit of a problem. I see what you mean. Um, it's partly due to the disconnect we have. We do have uh, partly between the framework and the platform uh, and the CMS, and it's partly because of a lack of people who work on it. Um, we're just so, uh, there's just a limited set of people working on UCM and working on the framework, and um, there's currently no one doing both working on the UCM and on the framework. So this does get lost a bit because we don't have the manpower. Any more questions? Ian? That's, 
I think it's always something that uh, hopefully any developer, who, especially who does open source, should now look for in the PHP world. If you have, as part of your application, um, a library that you think is useful to other projects as well, take it out, make it its own repository, put it on packages so other people can use it. Uh, the CMS should do the same. Now the CMS does get the benefit, it has already the infrastructure to do all this with the framework, so that they can just push the code to us, we probably have to use it to change it now to use namespacing because the CMS doesn't do that yet. Um, but generally, the work will be done. And, uh, but I encourage this for any uh, extension developer. If you have a set of libraries that's really useful beyond your own project, publish them separately from your extensions from your application and let other people use it, especially if you're doing open source, but also if you're doing not down to open source. If you have your in-house application and you have a part of a library that's really great, but it's not really your business logic, it's not really what defines the project. That's a, utility class you had to write to cover some hole in PHP or something that needed to be done and there wasn't no appropriate solution. If you don't really, it doesn't really add the value to your product, publish it as open source, pull it for the wider PHP community to use so people can use it. We don't have to own all the code in Joomla. Um, it can be just an outside library. Of course, if you write an extension, you can't really use Composer right now. But you can still take that library and apparently you can maybe use Composer during your development time. You can you should use Composer um, if you do write a framework application and try to publish or try to take these independent libraries and don't write everything your own or just take Joomla stuff. Yes? Um, a lot of the variation this follows on from some really good questions that they asked about what seemed to be a serious disconnect between the Joomla framework and, and what's called the CMS, which I suppose everybody knows as Joomla version, whatever it is. And um, I'm sort of wondering which is the cart and which is the horse and which is the horse's ass in, in all of this. If, if the driving force behind the CMS is the framework or the platform, but it strikes me that what most people see in the world today is that the CMS is sort of driving everything else, and the framework's not ready or whatever. Now, I think the, the serious, the, the comment I want to make is the question that you asked before, which is, who's doing what to try and bring it all together? And you said, uh, if I quote you correctly, that we don't have the manpower and we don't actually have that connection. Now, something is wrong in the Joomlaverse. I'm not the only person in the room who's seeking that. Um, the connect, uh, I have to phrase it shortly for the video. Um, I think the comment or question was um, what, who's driving the project and what's the relationship again between the CMS and the framework. Um, to me personally, it's not something that's defined anywhere or it's been discussed much. Is the CMS is of course the big brand. The thing, if I say, tell somebody, hey, I work on Joomla, everybody's going to think the CMS. The framework is of course developer focused. Not, nobody but developers is going to care for the framework, while the Joomla community is about much more than just developers. Um, now Jane Beyond is a very developer-centric um, conference. Um, we've seen that uh, on the keynote. Um, but if you go to any Joomla day um, and ask who's the de uh, developer, it's a subset, it's a small group uh, that's maybe there. Uh, it's most of these are the speakers. Um, so I think the framework is going to drive the underlying architecture choices and how we're going to work on the lowest level, like database abstraction, how the application is going to behave, how HTTP calls are abstracted. While the CMS is all about the user-facing features and the user experience, I mean, we have n the framework has nothing to do about how the GUI looks, how accessible it is, how data is managed currently. Um, these are all things. Um, that's up to the CMS. So the CMS drives what users need, and the framework is lo looking how to make it easy for developers, including the CMS developers, to write features, to write what users need in the most sane and easy and timely manner. And uh, currently we have this disconnect because we basically took a big knife and chopped the platform up in pieces. And so it doesn't really work for the CMS right now. Um, we did this because we wanted to introduce these big breaking changes, as I just mentioned, like namespacing, which we just can't do. If you slap namespaces on the CMS, which you probably can do in about one to two months, uh, we did it on the platform, and it's work, but it's doable in a short time frame. We can do that. We can start it tomorrow. Um, but all extensions developers are going to uh, be uh, in a very difficult position because then it's going to be really impossible to support more than one version with an extension. So it's not something we should take 
up to do. Uh, it's going to be an incredibly big brain change. We have done this because namespace is important if you're integrating with other projects, which we do want to encourage. And now the, ta the difficult task is, after we release the framework, is how, going to use the CM or how the CMS is going to use these packages again. This is going to happen very slowly. It's going to happen one package at a time. Um, we already have started some code um, to put in place, like Don has created this PSR0 autoloader, which is a prerequisite to even use the platform, uh, the framework. Um, we do have code around to alias names from the new namespace version to the old um, non-namespace version. Um, I have already written a logger to um, to wrap our old JLog as it's in the CMS right now, so it can be used in a PSL3 library, which is all the Joomla libraries now. So we do work on integrating these. It's just not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be even this year. Uh, my personal goal is to have at least five, better 10 packages in Joomla 4. Um, always I can promise that, but it's, it's going to happen. It's just going to take time. Yes. The question was why is there or why sh or should there be a master plan with a timeline when the uh, CMS and the framework reconnect? Um, yes, it's, pro it's um, not very well communicated. It's also actually very well planned, so there's not much to communicate. Um, these are mostly just ideas how to do it. We have um, no really master plan. It's probably something we need to discuss on the list. Um, we should discuss on the list. Um, we should do this shortly. We're just still working on the framework so much with creating it these intermittent packages that there hasn't been much focus on this. Um, but I agree it is something that needs to be done. Um, what should be clear is that the fr integrating the framework into the CMS is governed by the CMS's deprecation and backwards compatibility rules. It's not going to happen that we're going to rip out the database package and uh, put in the um, framework database package and tell the to shove it and deal with it. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, it's going to, what's going to happen is we're going to take our packages, we're going to define these interfaces on the CMS classes as far as possible, we're going to update the type hints so developers wouldn't feel anything about it, we're going to use this alias as possible, and we're going to start deprecating the old classes so the new class can be used. I do hope we already get some of this code for the transition into 3.5, so extension developers can use this new code and new approaches in uh, both 3.x and 4.x, um, but the majority of the work is going to happen in 4.0 to 4.5. So I don't think we're going to drop anything major from the CMS in terms of classes unless we can alias it um, until 5. So while 4 may be integrated and um, to a large part and um, use these new classes, I'm fully expecting these all classes to stay be available so um, extension developers don't have to dread this. Um, there is going to happen a lot of deprecating again, and this is going to require work um, by extension developers. Um, but given the rules the CMS has adopted for itself regarding deprecation, I don't, or I hope we don't have the same situation as we had for 1.6, for example. Um, but I do agree we need to have this discussion on list about what we approach, what approach we want to take and um, at what time, and we can probably already talk about what packages you do want at what uh, schedule. Um, this is something that needs to happen in the next few months. It should probably happen before 3.5 is, re or it definitely needs to happen before 3.5 is uh, going to be released. Um, but right now, the focus of the framework maintainers is very much on fully creating independent packages. Um, as mentioned, these are independent code-wise, the unit has not. Um, we can't really start attempting to even test integrating um, them with CMS until they're fully independent. So that's currently our focus, and once this, this is done, you can start testing um, what the impact is of which package on the CMS, and um, start outlining a plan and a timetable of what's going to happen. Any more questions? No, yeah.
but now we have duplicated the image, for example, or uh, and the, the CMS is doing uh, bug fixes. Mm. Um, to an extent, it's a problem because we have a disconnected code base, which is always a problem. We already had this problem to an extent with our platform because the CMS already had to do the fixes it just needed, especially security fixes. They just had to happen when they happened. And um, I always try to, um, and as for, um, we forced, basically forced people to submit them to the platform first. And if not, we try to uh, get them in, uh, in a timely manner. Um, we're going to we will be going through the CMS code base with the file history and the diff program and see what uh, fixes have been made and uh, adopt these. Um, it's going to be a, only a limited problem because a lot of the CMS specific code, the CMS titles a lot, has been dropped from the framework. Um, for example, URI is probably now 20% smaller than it was in the CMS because we dropped um, everything that's not general. Uh, usable and uh, generates the code that's the most tough to test and the most interdependent with the CMS and the most bug ridden uh, in a way because it's not easily testable. Um, so my expectation is that it's not going to be a huge problem but it's certainly going to require some work uh, before we're going to release a stable version and after we've released a stable version I um, hope that we can find a process with the CMS again to at least uh, get notice, notice about uh, fixes to the same um, classes that are in the framework um, so we can uh, fix them in a timely manner there too. Um, of course once we have adopted, uh, especially we're going to do this again for each user package as it's going into the CMS to make sure we don't break any break uh, out any uh, old bugs. Um, this is going to be helped a tremendous amount by the CMS adopting more unit tests because once we adopt a package we can um, use those unit tests first of all to confirm backwards compatibility. Um, that's something we all originally did in the framework before we decided um, to um, break it all. Um, we had our unit tests running on non-namespace code. We basically didn't touch the unit tests at all and just namespaced the code and we had all the unit tests to successfully run. So it's going to be an approach we can take for the CMS2. If they have good unit tests, we can make sure that we don't break anything. And, um, but we will go through it with a diff program, but I don't expect it to be much, but it's going to be some work. And now I'm done, and thank you. <laughs>